Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to look at a fun magic trick and I ask you to think about why it works and explore some patterns and then at the end of the video I'm going to talk about um, why this trick works. How can we think about it and really prove it algebraically. So what is this trick? Well I don't know what the name of it is but let me show you two two great flash animations of it. This one's called the magic gopher. You can search it. You start off by picking a two digit number and they have fun music in the background. So let's assume you pick 43. So we pick 43. The next thing we do, once we've chosen that number, and you could pick any two digit number, is add together the two digits. So if you chose 43, right, you add 4 and 3 to get 7. Keep going here. Once you've added those up, you subtract. So if you start with 43, right, and you add up 4 and 3 to get 7, you subtract 7 from 43, and now you get a number. In this case, you get 36. And now we're almost ready for the magic trick. So here we go. We've had a number. We've subtracted the sum of the digits. And every trick or every version I've seen has this last step or some version of it. Whatever number you have, so if you have 43 and then you subtract um, right, 7 from 43 and you get 36, you would find 36, find that result after you subtract on this chart and write down the symbol that's next to it. So here's mine right here. Right, write down that symbol and, or remember it and then you're ready for the last step. And the magic gopher right, will predict your symbol. And this is the fun part. Right? If you did the mathematics correct here, that of course is the symbol you would get. Now before I move on, let me show you another version. Uh, another one is called Regifting Robin. Um, different presentation, but same trick, same basic idea. So, you want to play Guess the Regift? Okay, I'm up for the challenge. After all, I'm a real regifting know-it-all. First, pick any two-digit number. As an example, I'll pick 25. Once you've picked a number, subtract both the first and second digits from your number. For the number 25, I'll take 25 minus 2 minus 5. That equals 18. When you figured out the math, remember your number and then click Next. So here's another flash you know, animation or presentation here. They give you this chart. You know, and once, you, once you do this trick, you're trying to predict the gift that's going to be re-gifted and sent out again because they don't like it. If you find yours here, and, and if you pick 25, you, know, you add 2 and 5 to get 7, subtract 7 from 25. It gives you 18, so I'd find 18 here on this chart. There it is. Uh, so I get a night light. And then um, if you do the prediction, of course, right, following through with the trick. Where is it? Click next. Right. Regifting Robin predicts what will be regifted. And you could try again. And this is also a fun one. So anyway, I mean, this does seem magical. And in, in many ways, these patterns in algebra often, even after, you know, I guess you solve them, they still feel fun and magical to me. So let's look at this magic trick. I think the first, the first, you know, step to really decoding, I think, all these tricks is to try out examples. So let's try a couple of numbers. Let's try. Um, well, we already tried 43, right? And then we tried 25 with regifting Robin. So let's try. I don't know. 66, right? And I'm going to write like this: 43, 25, 66, and 19. So in each of these cases, the first step is to add the digits. So here, 4 and 3 is 7. Here, 2 plus 5 is 7. Here, 6 plus 6 is 12. And here, 1 plus 9 is 10. And then we subtract that from our original number. Now, of course, as Regifting Robin shows, you could just have your audience, if you go to perform this, subtract, for example, 4 and 3 from 43. Here we'll just do 43 minus 7, right? And that equals 36. Oops, 36. Okay. And then here, well, we get 25 minus 7, and that gives us 18. And here, 66 minus 12, that gives me 54. And then 19, well, 19 minus 10 is 9. And when you do this, keep trying or plugging in numbers until you see a pattern. Now before I go any further, I should warn you, you should try and solve this trick on your own. I'm going to share with you how I interpret it, 
but you might have some fun figuring this out yourself. So here we go. What I noticed right away is that each of these numbers, they're multiples of 9, right? 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 6 is 54, right? 9 times 1, 9 times 6, 9 times 2, and 9 times 4. So now once you, you know, establish a pattern, maybe make a, a prediction. The prediction could be is that you'll always get a multiple 9, a multiple of 9 when you do this process of adding together the digits and subtracting. Then the question is, why? How can we understand this? And that's where our algebra comes in. I think one thing we need to do here is we can represent a two-digit number using uh, a little, I think, something that's complicated at first, but I think you get the hang of it. A two-digit number can be represented by something like 10x plus 1y. And all I'm saying there is a two-digit number has a tens place, some number of tens, right? That's where x comes in. We don't know how many tens. And some number of ones, and maybe a different number, right? So x and y don't have to be equal. And that's a two-digit number. So like 43, for example, let's just look at this. That equals 10 times 4, right? That's the 40, plus 1 times 3. So for that two-digit number, there were four tens and three ones. So x was equal to 4, and y was equal to 3. If you plug that in, you get 43. So we're saying all two-digit numbers have some number of tens and some number of ones. So what are we doing in this trick with our two-digit number? Well, basically, we're looking at the 40 and the, th the 3 as just a 4 and the 3. So instead of, wait, we start with a 10x and, and a y. I'm just going to write y instead of 1y. And then we find, well, what's x and y? We add them up, right? So for 43, for example, I'll write this over here. You have 10 times 4 plus 1 times 3. This is for 43. We'll do that in this column. And this is for any number over here. We're going to generalize this. Well, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, yeah, I know that the 43, the 4 is 4 tens, but I'm just going to say that x, right, that number of tens, is now just a 4, or it's just an x. So it's just a 4. And the y value, well, it's still just a y. So we're going to add 4 and 3, or x and y, the number of tens and the number of ones. And then what we do is subtract. So here with 43, we did 43 minus 4 minus 3. Or you can think of that same thing as 43 minus 4 plus 3. These are both equivalent. I'm going to use, I think, well, I'll use both versions to help explain. Because what's going to happen now is we have this equation. 10x plus y minus x plus y. Right? We subtract this sum from this original number. And how do we deal with that? Well, if, if you're subtracting x plus y, that means you're subtracting both x and y. Right? You're subtracting both parts. 10x plus y minus x minus y. You subtracted both parts. And that goes back to this idea that these two things are equal. right? If you think about it, 43 minus 4 is 39 minus 3. That's 36. And here, when you add 4 and 3 to get 7, 43 minus 7 is also 36. So subtracting 4 plus 3 is the same thing as subtracting 4 and subtracting 3. Same thing here. Subtracting x plus y is the same as subtracting x and subtracting y. Why am I showing you all this? Well, now we can combine like terms. And one thing I notice right away, we have a positive y and a negative y. So those cancel out. And then we have 10x minus x. 10x minus x. And what's that? Well, 10x is minus 1x is equal to 9x. So algebraically, we showed that any number you pick in the end, Right? Any two-digit number you pick, you get 9 times something. In other words, some multiple of 9, right? You can have 1 9 or 2 9s or 3 9s or 4 9s, any number of 9s. So it doesn't matter what number you pick, you'll always get a multiple of 9. That's the algebra here. And you can extend this, and I leave it to you to really play with this, but you can do this with three-digit numbers, right? Four-digit numbers. All, you know, n-digit numbers. You can do this with anything. 
with a three-digit number, right, let's say we have the number 123. Well, you can think of this as some number of hundreds, right, 100 times x, plus some number of tens, let's say, and then plus some number of ones, let's say r, x, y, and r. So in this case, when you, when you add up these digits, like one, 123, what you would do is you'd add 1 plus 2 plus 3, right, and that's 6. So you get 123 minus 6, and that equals, well, 117, right? And if you look at 117, that's actually a multiple of 9. You might not recognize it, of course, because it's not so friendly. But what is that? Well, 9 times, nine times 14, for example, that is, well, 9 times 10 is 90, and 9 times 4 is 36. Okay, too big, 126. So actually, it's 1, 9 less, so it's 9 times 13. 9 times 10 is 90. 9 times 3 is 27. That equals 117. So we still get a multiple of 9. How come? Well, we can show this with the algebra. And this is, you know, I'm going to show you for three digit, but you can really extend this for anything. For the three digit number, you know, you're taking 100x plus 10y, some three digit number, plus 1r, and then you're subtracting an x, subtracting a y, and subtracting an r. What happens is, like before, the r's or the 1's place will cancel out. And the 100x minus x is 99x. And 10y minus y is 9y. Wait, we can even factor this out. Factor out the 9, we get 11x plus y. So this is some number, right? Well, 9 times some number. In other words, we're going to get some amount of 9s, another multiple of 9. You can really extend this trick. And you know, I suggest you play with this with your friends or family and make up your own versions. Really expand on it. Have them pick any digit and somehow find ways to incorporate it. And you know, I, I want you to think about, maybe I'll cover this in other videos, how could you really show that this will work for any, any amount of digits without actually writing all of the place values out? So thanks, I hope you enjoyed.